A five-year-old girl living with an abusive father goes missing. Her mother tries desperately to get the police and the government to look for her. However, it takes two years before action is finally taken to search for the little girl. By that time, she was nowhere to be found. What happened to the little girl? Why did it take police and government officials two years to get involved? Before we start, we would like to send our sincere condolences to the loved ones of Harmony Montgomery, who fell victim to the abominable acts described in this case. Welcome to Manchester, New Hampshire the largest city in the state. It is filled with rich culture and magnificent art. New Hampshire also happens to be one of the hardest hit states by the opioid epidemic. Meet five-year-old Harmony Montgomery, born June 7, 2014. Harmony spent most of her life in Haverhill, Massachusetts. She initially lived with her biological mother, Crystal Sori. Harmony was born blind in her right eye and had to wear glasses once she was old enough. Crystal described Harmony as a sweet, smart, kind, funny little chatterbox who loved Minnie Mouse. Since Crystal struggled with substance abuse, she had lost custody of Harmony to the state not long after she was born. Harmony spent most of her life bouncing in between foster homes and living with her biological mother. Her father, Adam Montgomery, had little to do with Harmony until he gained custody of her in February of 2019. It was then that Harmony went to live with her father, stepmother, and two half-siblings in Manchester, New Hampshire, in a home located on Guilford Street. In November of 2021, Harmony would be reported missing, and it would be discovered that no one had been able to locate her for the past two years. I'm appealing to everyone. <clears throat> Help us find this little girl. The little girl is Harmony Montgomery of Manchester, New Hampshire. She was last seen in October 2019, two years ago, but was just reported missing to police last Friday when they got a call from the Division of Youth and Family Services. I'm not getting into specifics of, of where she should have been or who she should have been with, other than to, to tell you that where she should have been and who she been, should have been with, she's not with those people and she's not at that location. Back in 2014, the Division of Child, Youth, and Families, the DCYF, placed Harmony with a foster family after deciding that Crystal, her mother, was unfit to care for her due to her struggle with drug abuse. The DCYF's goal at the time was to reunite Harmony with her mother once Crystal was clean. Because Crystal continued to battle her drug addiction over the next few years, Harmony spent most of her life bouncing back and forth between living with her mother and living with her foster family. Harmony's father, Adam Montgomery, was in prison when she was born and wasn't released until Harmony was over a year old. The first time Harmony ever saw her father was in January of 2015, during a supervised visit at the prison when she was only seven months old. Though Harmony's father was released from prison in September, he made no effort to see her for an entire year. In September of 2016, Adam contacted the DCYF to begin regular visits with Harmony. They were able to see each other once a month, but that only lasted five months. For unknown reasons, Adam stopped scheduling visits and Harmony would not see him again for nearly a year. With Adam showing little interest in his daughter's life and Crystal still struggling with her drug abuse, Harmony was nearly adopted by her foster family that she had been staying with in Haverhill. However, Crystal was given one more chance to prove that she could be a reliable parent to Harmony in January of 2018. But she inevitably lost custody of the child once again. In December 2018, the court was ready to give up on reuniting Harmony with her mother, and she was placed up for adoption. At this point, Harmony's foster family had lost interest in adopting her. As Crystal continued to fight for custody of Harmony, Adam unexpectedly declared that he now wanted custody of her as well. A hearing was scheduled in February of 2019 to consider both Crystal and Adam's requests for custody. However, Crystal had another court date scheduled at the same time in regards to her other child, Jameson, Harmony's half-brother, 
who also spent time with her and also in foster care. Crystal asked the court for a continuance because she couldn't attend both hearings at the same time, but that request was denied. Somehow, even with his extensive criminal background and history of drug abuse, Adam successfully gained custody of the little girl. Harmony went to live with her father, stepmother Kayla, and their two children on Guilford Street in Manchester, New Hampshire. In spite of Adam having custody, Crystal remained active in Harmony's life and kept in touch with her from Massachusetts. Around Easter, Crystal had a FaceTime call with Harmony and Adam sat in on the conversation. During the video chat, Crystal said that every time she would ask Harmony a simple question, Adam would mute the chat, say something to Harmony, before unmuting it and allowing Harmony to speak again. From what Crystal could see, Harmony appeared scared and uncomfortable with her father. When Crystal tried to question Adam about his odd behavior over the video chat, he yelled at her, told her to mind her own business, and then promptly ended the call. Crystal tried to call back, but to no avail. This would be the last time Crystal would ever see or hear her daughter again. Crystal spent the next 20 months following her FaceTime call with Harmony, trying desperately to get back in touch with her daughter. First, she tried calling Adam numerous times, but he wouldn't return her calls. Next, she tried contacting his family in Florida, who used to live with him at the home on Guilford Street, but they said they could no longer get in touch with Adam either. Crystal contacted various schools that Harmony could be attending and even drove through different areas of Manchester hoping to spot either Adam or Harmony, but they were nowhere to be found. During the summer of 2019, Adam's uncle, Kevin Montgomery, visited him from Florida. During his visit, Kevin noticed Harmony had a black eye. When he questioned Adam about that, Adam proudly admitted to, quote, bashing Harmony around the house. Kevin also noticed that Adam used harsh punishments on the little girl when he punished her. Kevin saw Adam force Harmony to scrub the toilet using her own toothbrush and spanked her numerous times using excessive force. Adam also made Harmony have timeouts in a corner that would go on for hours, sometimes to the point of wetting herself. I would hasten to add that the child was five years old. Kevin returned to his home in Florida in July. Once he was home, he made an anonymous call to the DCYF and told them of all the maltreatment he had witnessed from Adam towards Harmony. About a month later, on August the 7th, a social worker paid a visit to Adam's house to investigate the anonymous allegations. They noticed Harmony had a red mark on her eye and a faded bruise under her eyelid. Adam explained that they were injuries from one of her other siblings who had thrown a toy at her while they were playing. Concluding that it was his uncle, Kevin, who had called the DCYF, Adam cut ties with his family in Florida. The social worker made another house call on October the 1st. During the visit, they noted all the children appeared happy and healthy. The social worker labeled the abuse allegations as unfounded in their report, but determined the family was at high risk for future child welfare concerns. The DCYF received another call regarding a concern about one of Adam's other children months later on January 8th of 2020. When the social worker arrived, they noticed Harmony wasn't in the home. When they asked about Harmony's whereabouts, Adam said that she had been visiting her mother in Massachusetts since about Thanksgiving of 2019. It's at this point in the case that information between Crystal, the DCYF, and the police began to contradict. On January 21, 2020, Child Protective Services, CPS, said they tried to contact Crystal to confirm that Harmony was in her care. Officials say Crystal never returned their call, but Crystal claims that she never received the call in the first place. A report released by the governor's office in late February indicated that in January of 2022, DCYF was notified that Harmony was now in her mother's custody. The report indicates that DCYF reached out to Crystal to confirm, but she did not return the call. They claimed that they called me. When? Um, I'm in the process of getting all the, um, the phone records um, for my old phone numbers that I had from 2019 to present. You know, to prove that I never received a voicemail, I never received a phone call from these people. 
Crystal said that she had been desperately trying for months to get the police and the DCYF to respond to her pleas about her missing daughter, but kept getting the runaround. Uh, you know, I had called right after he stopped talking to me, but um, I was talking to my therapist and I, you know, I was telling her, like, listen, this is affecting my mental health. I can't sleep. I'm super depressed. Like, you know, my son's well taken care of, but me personally, I was really sad you know like something right here all the time just telling me like you got to get her you got to get her you know and I t said to my my therapist I said no one's hearing me <laughs> I've made reports I've talked to uh, desk uh, people at DCF office because I didn't have a certain extension because Demetrius wasn't on the case anymore which was the person that was supposed to remove her that didn't um, he knew Adam personally he was Adam's D DYS uh, counselor. So he was a conflict of interest from the beginning. So the three times they were supposed to remove her, they didn't because he knew him personally. And then I got word when uh, Mauricio had reached out to me and said, you know, um, I was told you had made past reports. Um, and then they started asking me questions about Harmony. And, and I said, I still haven't seen or heard from her nothing and didn't hear anything, didn't hear anything. The guy was all, I have all the text messages from the guy basically doing nothing. So um, I reached out to the mayor and I said, listen, if you guys don't help me find my daughter, because DCYF and DCF and Mass dropped the ball on this one, let her slip through the cracks. I said, I'm going to straight to the media. I don't care. It was like hours later, I got a phone call from the police in Manchester. And I had already called the Manchester police. They told me I couldn't file a missing persons report because he had physical custody of her. So they said like, they told me go to court and file a petition to get custody. So I go there and they tell me if it's a DCYF open case, then I can't go there <laughs> and go to court. So they were running, like sent me around for busy work. You know what I mean? While they were trying to figure out how to cover their butt. And it was just, when they knew I couldn't do anything at the courthouse, but they still sent me over there, you know what I mean? And then, you know, the cops called me and they're like, we're completely involved now. Do you have told me this is really suspicious, blah, blah, blah. And then it came on the news. I wasn't her voice, or I couldn't be, or nobody could hear me. You know, I just want people to hear me and come forward and tell us something. Because somebody knows something. It's a fact. <laughs> like, someone knows something and either they're too afraid to get in trouble or whatever, but someone knows something. <laughs> More calls would be made to the DCYF between January 13th and March the 16th with concerns regarding the safety of the Montgomery children. Each visit to the house, social workers noticed that Harmony had not returned, and Adam continued to tell them that Harmony was with her mother. Knowing of Crystal's desperate attempts to locate Harmony, a friend of hers contacted the DCYF saying that Harmony's mother hadn't seen her daughter since April of 2019 and that something needed to be done. But even this didn't seem to do any good in getting the agency involved. Even though Crystal said that she had made numerous calls to the Manchester Police Department to report Harmony missing, the police say the first time that Crystal ever contacted them about Harmony was on November the 18th of 2021. The first step that police took was to contact the DCYF, who provided them with all of Adam's addresses that they had on file, but they were unsuccessful in finding either Adam or Harmony at any of the listed locations. On December 21st, 2021, the DCYF informed the Manchester Police Department that they were unable to locate Harmony. At this point, investigators decided to focus their attention on locating Adam. They were able to get in touch with some of Adam's family members in Florida. Investigators spoke with Adam's 30-year-old half-brother, Michael Montgomery, who expressed his concerns that Adam was abusive towards Harmony after hearing stories from his uncle Kevin. Investigators spoke with Kevin, who told them about the call he made to DCYF back in July of 2019 and what he had witnessed. He also said he believed Adam may have been having a drug relapse at that time. Investigators eventually spoke with Adam's wife, Kayla, who said that she hadn't seen Adam since October of 2021 and hadn't spoken to him since November of that same year. The investigators asked Kayla if she knew where Harmony was, and Kayla said the last time that she saw Harmony was two days after Thanksgiving in 2019. Adam dropped Kayla off at the Dunkin' Donuts in Manchester where she worked. 
Then Adam told Kayla he was going to take Harmony to her mother in Massachusetts. Kayla said that she worked from 6 a.m. until 2 p.m. that day. During that time, Adam supposedly returned Harmony to her biological mother. When he picked her up at the end of her shift, it was just the two children they shared in the back of the car. This was the last time she heard anything about Harmony. Fast forwarding back to December of 2021, during a voluntary interview with Manchester police detectives, the defendant told detectives that she had last seen Harmony two days after Thanksgiving in 2019, which would have been November 30th of 2019. In that interview, the defendant said on that date, Adam dropped her, the defendant, off for a 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. shift at the Dunkin' Donuts on Fort Eddy, excuse me, on Eddy Road in Manchester. She said when Adam dropped her off, he told her he was bringing Harmony to Harmony's mother, and the defendant told police at that time that she didn't see Harmony again after that. When they questioned Kayla about Harmony's reported black eye, she told them that Adam said one of the other children had hit her with a toy. Investigators asked Kayla if she knew where Adam was now. She told them that Adam had been staying in a sober house and then had moved to Maine and was living with some other woman. On December 29, 2021, Crystal believed that nothing was being done to find her daughter and decided to send an email to Manchester Mayor Joyce Craig. In the email, Crystal said, My oldest daughter, Harmony, is seven years old. Her father, Adam Montgomery, has physical custody of her, and he is currently homeless and under the influence. DCYF has had an open case for my daughter and didn't remove her when they witnessed her bruises and the house at the time had no running water. Now it is a year later and DCYF has done nothing to help find her. She's supposed to be in the first grade, but he never enrolled her. She also missed important doctor's appointments. Please, I'm begging for help in finding my daughter before she ends up like that boy who passed away due to neglect through the DCYF. My next step is going to the media to get whatever help I need to find her and bring her home safe. Two days later, the Manchester Police Department made a public announcement that Harmony was missing. That same day, Manchester patrol officers finally located Adam, who was sleeping inside of a vehicle with his now-girlfriend, Kelsey Small, in Manchester. Investigators were immediately called to the scene. Their conversation lasted 45 minutes. At first, Adam refused to comment on Harmony. However, he eventually told them that she was still alive. Your daughter's alive? Yeah. You're sure? I'm positive. You're... you're like, swear on your life. I swear on my life. When investigators questioned Adam's girlfriend, she said that she had been dating Adam for over a year. She knew Adam had four children by two different women, but that he was not in touch with any of them, and that Adam never spoke of Harmony. Later that same day, police found Adam again and served him with a court order that stated he had to provide information regarding Harmony's whereabouts. Police also detained Adam and brought him in for questioning. While being questioned, Adam told investigators Harmony was picked up by her mother, Crystal, and taken to Massachusetts. This story did not match the one Adam's wife, Kayla, had previously told them. Investigators contacted Crystal's live-in boyfriend and asked whether or not Harmony was with her in their care, as Adam and Kayla had claimed. He told investigators that Harmony did not live with Crystal in 2019, nor had he ever seen the little girl in person. On January 2, 2022, investigators conducted an extensive search of the Guilford Street home in Manchester where Harmony had lived with her father. The new owner of the home was more than happy to cooperate in finding the little girl. Cadaver dogs were used to search the house, and the backyard was even thawed with pipes and hot water so that sonar could be used to search for anything buried in it. This is an aerial view of the backyard operation. Tents obscure a lot, but a person shoveling dirt onto a tarp can be seen. Investigators have not divulged if a tip is the reason for this operation. Police calls for service to 77 Guilford Street between 2018 to 2021, not including this criminal investigation. The Manchester Police Department was contacted 29 times, often by concerned neighbors, including a dozen nuisance and animal complaints and two child welfare calls. Manchester police filed a formal incident report to DCYF on September 11, 2019, citing, quote, clutter and empty food containers in every room. 
noting, quote, all three children appeared clean and fed. That report also said the home was using a generator for electricity, but there was food in the house and everyone was healthy from confirming any information about any of its cases. Harmony's mother, Crystal, was interviewed by reporters during the same time the Guilford Street home was being searched. She told reporters that she believed the search was a waste of time. They're just they're just scouring for any type of anything. Do really. you think there's something at that house? No. I don't have a feeling like there's I would I get these crazy intuitions I always have and I don't have any type of intuition about that house. I feel like they're wasting time to be honest. But that's just my opinion. I'm and I'm also hoping as well, you know, that there's there's nothing. Crystal would turn out to be right. She believed Adam was either hiding Harmony with his mother, who lives in Florida, or that he may have sold her off for money. I, I still believe she's here. I think he has her with either, like, his mother that no one knows really anything about because she never raised him, you know. But I think he would call his mom or hit her up on Facebook and say, I'm in real bad trouble. I need you to take her. You're the only one that no one knows. You know what I mean? I feel like he sold her. I think he sold her because the same week that they're saying this happened, the day after Thanksgiving to December 6th, was this, the week after my son legally got adopted on the news. You know what I mean? And he knew what my son looked like. He, you know, <laughs> that's my daughter's brother, you know. So he saw that, and I really think it's connected. I think, like, he got that idea from seeing that and was like, oh, I can do it illegally, you know. Because not for nothing, right around the same time, uh, you know, human trafficking was at an all-time high. So was Oregon uh, harvesting, which I don't even want to go there, you know. But um, at least if he sold her to a family that legally couldn't adopt or something, you know, there's still hope that she's at least safe somewhere. Due to Adam's refusal to cooperate, his contradictory stories and the accusations from others saying that Adam had abused Harmony, Adam was placed under arrest for second-degree assault on January 4th. Adam's criminal history had begun during his teenage years. In 2008, at the age of 18, Adam reportedly stabbed another teenage boy in the leg before pushing him out of a moving car during a drug deal. In 2014, during the time Crystal was pregnant with Harmony, Adam was arrested and sentenced to 18 months in prison after pleading guilty to armed robbery, armed assault with the intent to murder, and discharging an unlicensed firearm within 500 feet of a dwelling. Attempting to rob his dealer, Adam had shot him in the face, but the drug dealer was lucky and survived. He was later able to identify Adam by a tattoo on Adam's back. Adam's sentence began three months after Harmony was born. Adam had racked up numerous criminal charges over his 32 years, including assault, stalking, drug abuse, drug dealing, and burglary. After his arrest on January the 4th of 2022, investigators interviewed Adam and again tried to find out where Harmony was. During his interview, Adam made multiple contradictory statements. One of those contradictory statements was in relation to Harmony's black eye. Adam's uncle had told police about Harmony's black eye, the same black eye that Adam told social workers was caused by one of Harmony's siblings. During his interview with police, Adam said he knew nothing about any injuries to Harmony. Well, your daughter had some injuries that, that you know about when you lived on Guilford Street. No, I do not. What That's, are you referring to? Well, you were there, I wasn't, right? Well, what are you referring to? I'm referring to her having some good marks. What are you referring to? Marks that were left on her by you. Absolutely not. I have nothing else to say. You're sitting there telling me that right off the rip that there was something wrong with my daughter because of me. No, that's bullshit. Okay. So if your daughter had marks on her at, at some point when you lived over there, as how well. would you explain those? How would she have got those marks? Well, I would love to know when that marks were there because DCYF came to my house multiple times. Okay. And we know. We know that they came there. Right. And and close the case. Okay. Do we know that DCYF is the uh, flagship agency in, in the country? No. But if there was 
significant marks like you're referring to, I believe they would have flagged something at that point and they would have said something. They would have came there and seen that the kids were well taken care of. All the kids loved being at the house with me. Yeah, but for you to sit there and say that it was inflicted because of me. We're just going on what we hear. We're, you're, not, you're not telling us how that, so we're going with what we have. But I, I don't even know what you're referring to. What are you referring to? Your daughter had a mark on her face that people, multiple people, have told us was inflicted by you. Multiple people that weren't even living with us at the time. Well. When asked why the DCYF began checking up on Adam's family, he told investigators that his uncle, Kevin, told them that he was using drugs. But then later, he changes his story. You don't recall your daughter ever having a mark on her face? The reason DCYF came out to visit you guys, you don't recall that? Why did DCYF come out and start visiting you guys? What was the allegation? If I remember correctly, it was because of, um, I believe at the time, I could be wrong. I, I believe it had something to do with my uncle saying I was using drugs, and I wasn't. Now, who's your uncle so we are clear? Kevin. Okay. And Kevin's last name? Montgomery. Oh, that's what it was. That, that's what it was due. That's what it was due to. So, Kevin moved out because between me and my wife and Kevin, we were supposed to, like, pay the bills, keep the heat on, the gas, yeah, yeah. whatever. Well, Kevin was supposed to pay the electric bill. He didn't pay the electric bill. Me and my wife, I picked my wife from work and showed up at home. They were shutting the electricity off. So, me and Kevin got into an argument about um, not paying the bill. Yeah. And he took his shit and moved out. And then, so, the next day, DCY, or two days later, something like that, I don't know, DCYF showed up and the police showed up because they said that we were unfit to have the children at the house because there was no electricity in the house. Okay. But we had a generator running, we had the fridge hooked up to it, there was food in the fridge, everything was fine. The police showed up, seeing that the kids was fine, there was nothing wrong with them. The DCYF showed up and they, and they left. Next, Adam told investigators that he and his family had been kicked out of the house on Guilford Street around Thanksgiving of 2019 because his grandmother, who owned the property, stopped paying the mortgage. Afterward, the next place the family stayed, including Harmony, was with his mother-in-law. How did it end up that you guys got kicked out of there? All right, so it was my grandmother's house. Right. They didn't pay the mortgage or whatever. They, they moved to Florida, so the mortgage payments weren't being paid. And the, I don't know, right around Thanksgiving sometimes, the sheriffs came and threw us out. And then? And then me, Harmony, and Declan, Seamus, and Kayla left. And where the heck did you guys go from there? We were in our car. Oh, so you, had, so you lived in your car at that time? For a couple of days. Okay. And then... What, did you have like a van or something like that back then at least? Mm -hmm. to, what were you driving back then? Uh, Christ of some kind, I forget. Oh, so it was just like a sedan? A sedan, yeah. Okay, so you're living in the, in the car that... So you, Kayla, and the three kids were living in the car for a few days and then how, how'd you get up out of that situation? Like, who, who took you in, or where'd you guys send him? We're in the room our mom's house, Kayla's mom's house. Okay, and, and what's her her name? Chris. Chris, how, how she, well, I mean, she must be okay. She's willing to take you guys in. Yeah, all right, they're like, all right, I, 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 you know what, man, like, I don't even want to talk anymore. Like, this is just beating around the bush, man. It just seems a little too silly to me. Minutes later, however, Adam would say something completely different. I already clarified him. I already told you the other day what transpired. So we weren't, we didn't all didn't even go to her mother's house. Okay. Who didn't go to her mother's Harmony house? Harmony was all. Okay, so Harmony didn't go to Chris's house. So explain to me how she didn't end up going to Chris's house. I've already explained this to you. 
When investigators questioned Adam on how Harmony ended up with her mother in Massachusetts, Adam refused to admit that he had ever said that she was with her mother. Well, there's some discrepancies between what you're telling us and what other people are telling us. You're saying you brought it down to Mass, that somebody said she came up from Mass. I never once said I brought it down to Mass. What did you say? She came up here to get her? I never once said. She went, I was on your video recording the other day. I never once said I went down to Mass. So you're saying that she came up from Mass? I'm not saying anything else. At a point during the conversation, Adam became completely uncooperative, saying that he had nothing else to say. Investigators noticed Adam showed no signs of concern or emotion when they told him that Harmony had not been seen for over two years and that they didn't know whether or not she was even still alive. Two days later, his wife Kayla was also arrested for alleged welfare fraud, in which she pled not guilty. Kayla neglected to inform the New Hampshire Department of Health and Human Services that she no longer lived in the same home with Harmony, yet continued to collect over $1,500 worth of food stamps between December of 2019 and June of 2021 that were meant for Harmony. In April, Adam and Kayla received more charges regarding two stolen guns, a shotgun and an AK-47-style rifle from a home in Manchester. The crime allegedly took place between September 29th of 2019 and October 29th of that same year. Kayla was accused of harboring the weapons, knowing they had been stolen, and again, she pled not guilty. After being held in prison for four months, Kayla was released on May the 7th. She was told to check in with Manchester police daily and to continue her substance abuse treatment. At some point that month, investigators talked to the managers of Dunkin' Donuts, where Kayla said that she was working the last time she saw Harmony. As it turns out, records showed that Kayla was not working for them two days after Thanksgiving in 2019 like she had claimed. On May 20th, Kayla presented her testimony to the grand jury. After giving her testimony, investigators informed Kayla of their discovery and asked once again for her cooperation and honesty regarding the last day she saw Harmony and where she was that day. But Kayla firmly stated that she had told them the truth. Investigators went and checked with multiple Dunkin' Donuts locations within the area Kayla claimed to be working. It turned out that Kayla had worked at two different Dunkin' Donuts locations, but her employment status had ended by November 23, 2019. Kayla was arrested again in early June on perjury charges for lying to the grand jury twice. Having been caught, Kayla told investigators that Adam murdered Harmony. Kayla stated that Adam told her to lie about seeing Harmony to provide Kayla with an alibi and promised her everything would be okay as long as she stuck to the story. Police released Kayla three days later on the grounds that she check in with police daily and attend recommended drug treatment programs and have no contact with Adam and, of course, stayed off drugs. Once Kayla was arrested on a bench warrant on September 9th for failing to show up at a hearing, her chance of bail was revoked. In November, Kayla agreed to a plea deal. This deal required her to plead guilty to two counts of perjury regarding her location at the time Harmony went missing. For punishment, Kayla must serve a prison sentence of up to a year and a half before being eligible for bail. She also must cooperate in future state proceedings, which include the gun theft trial and the upcoming trial involving her husband, Adam. Harmony's mother was very upset to hear that Kayla was getting off so easily. I was upset. Harmony Montgomery's mom, Crystal Sorry, says she wasn't happy when she heard from investigators this week that Kayla Montgomery had reached a plea deal. I told them how I felt and how this isn't fair and how, like, <laughs> she was a part of it. Sorry says Kayla, Harmony's stepmother, is getting off easy. But as far as I'm concerned, Kayla can rot. According to these court documents, Kayla will plead guilty to perjury charges. She'll serve less than two years behind bars in exchange for cooperating in the investigation into Harmony's murder. It means that she's doing it for herself so she can see the light of day again, so she can one day be free. She's not doing it for harmony. Kayla will be expected to reveal what she knows in the case against her estranged husband, Adam, who's been charged with murdering Harmony. Kayla has not been accused in Harmony's death or disappearance. There was multiple times where this woman could have stood up as a real woman and mother and done something.
done something to stop it, make a difference, something. She did nothing. Kayla told investigators in June that Adam murdered his daughter in 2019. Crystal says Kayla should have revealed that information a long time ago. Like, yay, you want a round of applause because you finally did the right thing? <sighs> She'll never get that from me. Continuing to search for Harmony, on January 14th, investigators searched an apartment where Adam and Kayla had lived in Manchester. Numerous items were taken from the home as evidence, including an entire refrigerator, doorknobs, and faucets. It is believed the investigation led to the recovery of DNA evidence that may play a significant role in a decision investigators would soon have to make regarding Harmony's situation. On August the 11th, 2022, investigators declared Harmony dead and assumed that her murder most likely took place on December 7th of 2019. No sign of Harmony's body was ever recovered. In the end, investigators determined that Adam murdered Harmony by repeatedly striking her in the head until she died, and it was announced on October 24th that Adam was being charged in the murder of his daughter. Adam is pleading not guilty. A motive for the murder of Harmony has not been released since Adam is refusing to talk. In the absence of a body, the public speculates that Adam may not have murdered her, but instead may have sold her to human traffickers. No one but Adam may know the true story behind what happened to Little Harmony. Adam has remained in prison since his arrest on January 4th of 2022. He is currently awaiting trial for the gun theft allegations to which he pled not guilty. A pretrial hearing took place on October 24th in regards to the new evidence prosecutors had brought to the case. Defense requested time to review the new evidence before the trial begins, some of that evidence being the testimony from Kayla Montgomery when she claimed that Adam was responsible for Harmony's death, which prosecutors announced to the defense only three weeks prior to the pretrial. The judge informed the prosecutor that he needed to turn over all of the evidence promptly and said, quote, you can't just hold on to information. As a result of the prosecutor's delay in handing over the evidence, Adam's trial has been delayed and no new court date has been set. According to the Child Welfare League of America, the state of New Hampshire has had a 30.6 increase in child abuse cases from 2016 until 2020. Data from the National Child Abuse and Neglect Data System NCANDS shows that in 2019, the year that Harmony went missing, there were a total of 12,798 cases of alleged child abuse, and out of that number, 1,217 children were considered victims of child maltreatment. The primary type of maltreatment children suffer is neglect. Most victims are less than one year old. Data collected from the NCANDS also shows that it takes Child Protective Services nearly five days before they investigate a child abuse report. It is recorded that at least two children lost their lives to child maltreatment in 2019, one being Little Harmony. Harmony's chances at a safe life and environment were slim. Though her mother loved her very much, Crystal's struggle with drug abuse made it difficult for her to be the mother she needed to be, and it has become evident that Adam cared not at all for Harmony's well-being. Harmony's best chance at a happy future would have come through adoption. The foster family, with whom she had spent the majority of her life, had hoped to adopt Harmony at one point. However, the court kept returning Harmony to her biological mother, who then would, of course, lose custody of her again. By the time Harmony was put up for adoption in February of 2019, the foster family had lost interest, and custody was handed over to her father, whose criminal history should have been a sign that he was not going to be a suitable parent. Unlike Harmony... Crystal's other child, Jameson, Harmony's half-brother, was able to find a safe and happy home. He was successfully adopted out to a loving couple, Blair and Jonathan Miller, in November 2019. Jameson shares a home with his adopted family that includes two older brothers. When adopting Jameson, the Millers knew nothing of his older sister. It wasn't until Jameson began talking about Harmony after living with the Millers for a while that they learned about her existence. They tried to learn more about Harmony and her situation and would have adopted Harmony if it was possible. But by the time they learned about Harmony, she had already gone missing. Harmony Montgomery's family is remembering the little girl three years after she disappeared. A memorial was held today in Haverhill, Massachusetts. 
Her mother, Crystal Sori, tells News 9 December 7th did mark three years since her daughter was last seen. In August, the Attorney General's office declared the case a homicide investigation. Talking about memories of her, um, you know, good things. Try to remember the good things, you know. Of course, you are never going to forget how what happened. Sori says she will hold a celebration of life for Harmony once her body is found. That'll be a private event for family. Adam still awaits his court date over unrelated charges to Harmony's murder, so a court date for Harmony's case appears unlikely to come anytime soon. Harmony's family continues to struggle with their loss, with which they wholly believe could have been avoided had the DCYF and the court system done their job to protect her. While Harmony's family awaits for justice to be served, they continue to hope that her body will be found so that she can finally rest in peace. If you suspect a child is being abused, call or text the Child Help National Child Abuse Helpline at 1-800-422-4453. You can also visit their website at childhelphotline.org. If you found this case compelling, don't forget to like the video, comment down below your take on it, and please subscribe to the channel. Also hit the notification bell in order to stay up to date each time we reveal a new shocking case. Until next time, stay safe and keep your eyes peeled. You never know what's lurking in the shadows.